My name is John Passfield, and the title of this reading will be John and Dickens, video 17, John Speaks to Dickens, part 2. So here is my novella, John and Dickens, A Christmas Mystery. The diagram is of John in Dickens' writing room, with Dickens seated on a chair and surrounded by his pre-Christmas Carol characters from his novels. Writer John Passfield leaves his home, buys a coffee, and drives down to the shores of Lake Erie to perform a Christmas ritual, strolling along the beach at Port Maitland. It's something he's done for many years, but this year is different. This year, John suddenly finds himself in the writing room of famed Victorian novelist Charles Dickens, who sets out his new idea for a Christmas tale. Dickens invites John to watch rehearsals for the writing of the story. But as Dickens struggles through contentious negotiations with his amazingly independent characters, John wonders whether a Christmas carol will ever be written. So that's the mystery. Will a Christmas carol ever be written? In the passages of a previous video reading, John is a passive listener and watcher, attempting to connect the two seemingly unconnected plans that the novelist Charles Dickens is explaining to John as stories which he is planning to write. One is a Christmas novella with characters such as Scrooge and the Cratchits and the Three Ghosts. And the other one is a Canadian novel with John as a character who is a writer. In frustration at the failure of Passive observation, John at one point challenges Dickens to come out in the open, as it were, and explain just exactly what he is trying to achieve. In a future reading, I shall present the reaction of Dickens to John's challenge. But here in this reading, it's John's challenge. So let's go to page 74. John has taken all of this in. He's been baffled by it. Dickens is filled with all kinds of big ideas, one of which is John as a character in a Dickens novel. John says, I never hear your characters talk, Mr. Dickens. I see you talking to them and see them talking to you, but I never hear what either of you has to say. I hear you when we were alone. Presumably you hear me. This is very strange to me. It's very strange indeed. Is it strange to you? Well, Dickens has a response in another video, but that's John's challenge. Now, let's go beyond that to page 85, where John speaks again to Dickens. And I'm wondering, does John continue the challenge? Or does he give up on the challenge, or does he take another tack in his attempt to figure out what's going on? Well, all we have is what John says. Would you say, Mr. Dickens, that the topic is never the topic? That a reader can misunderstand what an author means? That a reading of one of your books, of any book for that matter, is highly personal, that we make in the act of reading a book of our own? Well, that's what John says. Is he challenging Dickens? Is he giving up on the challenge? Or is he trying something entirely different to get where he wants to go, which is an understanding? Okay, that's 85. Let's go to 94. We're obviously leaving out an awful lot of information, a lot of imagery, but I'm selecting here. This is John's challenge. Okay, 94. Here's what John says. I'd like to thank you, Mr. Dickens, for this experience. It's uh, a very rare privilege, I'm sure. My appreciation for what you have shown me knows no bounds. I'm sure you'll understand if I say that some of the elements of this experience have been quite obvious to me, while others will take much time before they are known. So is John gaining ground or losing ground in his attempt to understand? Okay, that's all I'm going to read in this video, but um, there'll be more about the uh, novella 
in other videos, and of course one can always buy and read the novella. In a previous video presentation, I mentioned that there are two ways to speak to other people. One way is to speak directly, in words that seek to create change in the perceived relationship between oneself and another person. The other way is to use words as probes in an attempt to elicit more information about the nature of the relationship between oneself and another person. A passive form of speech is based on the assumption that until one has a reasonable understanding of a relationship, one cannot know what one's attempts to affect action might have. So it seems to me that in the first half of this novella, which I covered in a previous video reading, John is attempting to probe the author, the character, Charles Dickens, to try to figure out the nature of the relationship between the two, between John and Dickens. <clears throat> Excuse me. Here, in this video reading, from the second half of the novella, John seeks to challenge Dickens directly to reveal his motives. John asks Dickens why he is able to see Dickens interact with other characters, but is not able to hear Dickens interact with those same characters. The overriding question is twofold. Number one, who or what is controlling the John and Dickens relationship? And number two, for what purpose? We spend our lives interacting with other human beings. And the dynamics of those interactions are endlessly fascinating. Dickens' response to John's challenge will be the subject of another video reading. So there's another mystery we will try to solve. So thank you uh, for uh, watching this video. And I just want to remind you that the title is John and Dickens, A Christmas Mystery, a novel by John Passfield that is found on Amazon. If you want more information, that is found at my publisher's website, rocksmillspress.com. And then on my website, johnpassfield.ca, J-O-H-N-P-A-S-S-F-I-E-L-D.ca. There are two free books. You just click on the icon. They're both full books. They're both free. One is a planning notebook. And one is a journal. So uh, have a look at johnpassville.ca if you're interested. And lastly, I'll just say thank you for watching this video.